25, 2009. And this shipment contained 10 vials of lorazepam as well as 20 vials of midazolam. And that was on April 30th, 2009. The shipments continued. But interesting to note, as it relates to Conrad Murray's knowledge of what these drugs were doing, and his willingness to proceed with this manner of care uh, in, this, in this fashion. We learn that on May 10th, 2009, Conrad Murray made a voice recording on his iPhone. His iPhone had an application called iTalk. And although an application on the iPhone is just like any other digital voice recorder, Forensic computer specialists analyzed that iPhone and found this voice recording. They were able to time stamp it and date stamp it. The recording was made on May 10, 2009 at 9.05 a.m. On that recording, you will hear Michael's voice. On that recording, you will hear the voice of Conrad Murray. The evidence will reveal that this voice recording documents Michael Jackson highly under the influence of unknown agents with Dr. Murray evidently sitting nearby evidently observing maybe listening but recording on his iPhone what this evidence will reveal to you is Conrad Murray's knowledge of Michael's state on May 10th, 2009. What this evidence will reveal to you is Conrad Murray's knowledge of what he is doing to Michael Jackson on May 10th, 2009. Over a month and a half before Michael Jackson dies as a result of this very treatment. You will hear the whole recording during this trial but I'll play a clip now so you can have a, a taste of what Conrad Murray knew on May 10th, 2009. This is Theodora, we have not transcribed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. that recording again now that the volume's been turned up to an appropriate level listen to the voice of michael jackson on may 10 2009 <laughs> Nothing like this in my life. Go, go. I've never seen nothing like this. Go. It's it, it amazing. He is the greatest entertainer in the world. I'm taking that money. I'm really children. Children's. The biggest in the world. That is what Conrad Murray is seeing and observing on May 10th, 2009. And what does he do with that knowledge? What does he do with that information? On May 12th, he orders another shipment of propofol 
and my dad's a lamb. Again, he orders 40 of the 100 milliliter bottles of propofol just two days after that recording was made. Accompanying those 40 100 milliliter bottles were 25 20 milliliter bottles. For again, a total of an additional 45,000 milligrams of propofol. The next shipment occurs on June 10th, at which point Conrad Murray orders again 40 100 milliliter bottles and now 50 of the 20 milliliter bottles, totaling uh, in this shipment alone 50,000 additional milligrams of propofol. That is then followed on June 15th by an order of midazolam and lorazepam, again 10 vials of lorazepam and 20 vials of midazolam. And we learn from these shipments that through from April 6th and the shipment of June 10th, Conrad Murray ordered 255 separate vials of propofol, totaling 155,000 milligrams of propofol, equivalent to 15.5 liters or four.